Waldo Jeffels had reached his limit. It was now mid-August, which meant he had been separated from Marsha for more than two months. Two months, and all he had to show were three dog-eared letters and two very expensive long-distance phone calls. True, when school had ended and she'd returned to Wisconsin and he to Locust, Pennsylvania, she had sworn to maintain a certain fidelity. She would date occasionally, but merely as amusement. She would remain faithful. But lately, Waldo had begun to worry. He had trouble sleeping at night, and when he did, he had horrible dreams. He lay awake at night, tossing and turning underneath his pleated quilt protector, tears welling in his eyes as he pictured Marsha, her sworn vows overcome by liquor and the smooth soothings of some Neanderthal, finally submitting to the final caresses of sexual oblivion. It was more than the human mind could bear. Visions of Marsha's faithlessness haunted him. Daytime fantasies of sexual abandon permeated his thoughts. And the thing was, they wouldn't understand how she really was. He, Waldo, alone understood this. He had intuitively grasped every nook and cranny of her psyche. He had made her smile. She needed him. And he wasn't there. He had made her smile. She needed him. And he wasn't there. She needed him. He'd made her smile, and he wasn't there. And he wasn't there. She needed him, and he wasn't there. He'd made her smile, and he wasn't there. And he wasn't there. Then it struck him. It was absurd, he said. He would ship himself fast and close, special delivery. The next day, Walter went to the supermarket to purchase the
like an octopus, hands all over the place. She gestured, raising her arms upward in defense. The thing is, after a while, you get tired of fighting with him, you know. And after all, I didn't really do anything Friday and Saturday, so I kind of owed it to him. You know what I mean. She started to scratch. Sheila was giggling with her hand over her mouth. I tell you, I felt the same way. And even after a while, here she bent forward in a whisper. I wanted to. It was at this point that Mr. Jameson of the Clarence Darrow Post Office rang the doorbell of the large sticker colored frame house. When Marshall Bronson opened the door, he helped her carry the package. What do you think it is, she asked. I don't know. Inside the package, Waldo quivered with excitement. Oh, God, it's from Waldo. That schmuck said she was. Waldo felt his heart beating. He could feel the vibrating footsteps. It would be soon. Waldo trembled with expectation. 